Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let's review for our EOC. Today's topics will be genetics and biotechnology. So let's get started. In genetics, we are looking at, and you will be asked questions that revolve around the inheritance of a particular trait and predicting how those traits will be expressed in future generations. One trait is going to be something like plant height. It could be your eye color. It could be your ability to roll your tongue, to name a few. In the problem we're looking at here, we want to predict the ratios of an offspring that has, uh, we want to predict the ratios of offspring if you cross a hybrid tall plant with a short plant. Now hybrid, if you remember, also means heterozygous and that individual will have a dominant and a recessive allele. So you'll go ahead and you will put that individual's genotype across the top of your Punnett square. When you cross a hybrid individual with a short individual, short is recessive, so that means that the genotype of the recessive individual will be lowercase t, lowercase t. Now since it's a Punnett square, you have to bring your letters down from the top and bring your letters over from the side, keeping the dominant alleles first. And when you do this, you produce all possible genotypes of the offspring from this cross. Now this genotype right here, you will see is, is found in two boxes, which means that the probability that their offspring is heterozygous or hybrid is 50% the probability that their offspring are short or homozygous recessive is also 50% because I can find their genotypes in two boxes, which means that if we're looking for the phenotype, then those individuals would be 50% tall and 50% short. That's how you complete a Punnett square using simple dominant recessive traits. Let's move on to non-Mendelian genetics. In non-Mendelian genetics, the two problems that are easily confused with each other are codominance and incomplete dominance. Let's start by looking at just codominance. When you think of a, an individual that is a co-captain of a team, they are both present at the same time. So in codominant examples, you will see both traits expressed at the same time, like a pattern becomes formed. You see black and white stripes, you see polka dots, you see um, squiggly lines and circles, whatever it might. In the example we were looking at here, you're asked the, to predict the probability of offspring cross between a roan cow and a black and a white cow. White would be the genotype of a white cow would be capital W, capital W, because it's the only color that cow will express. Now, roan, if you don't know what the word roan means, roan means that you're seeing uh, basically a spotted cow. And that could be brown and white or red and white. For this example, we will use roan, meaning a brown and white colored cow. So complete your Punnett square. and figure out your ratios. You will have 50% of their offspring being roan or genotypes BW, and you will have the other 50% being white, genotypes being WW. Now let's compare that to incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, you will see a blend of colors. Most of the examples given for this type of problem will involve like flower colors. So our example, we're looking at a red flower and a white flower. Again, because it's non-Mendelian genetics, both alleles for red flowering and white flowering have to be capitalized. So a red flower's genotype will be capital R, capital R. A white flower's genotype will be capital W, capital W. And you cross your letters in your Punnett square and you come up with the genotype being RW. You find that in all four of your boxes, so 100% of the genotypes will be RW. Now when you interpret this genotype into a phenotype, RW is a blend, because it's incomplete dominance, a blend between red and white. And when you take red paint and you mix it with white paint, you will get 
pink paint. So those offspring will be pink 100% of the time. That's, in, that's incomplete dominance. Okay, let's move on to the next type of problem that you might see, sex-linked traits. Now, in sex-linked traits, males are more likely to express the trait because male genotypes for sex-linked, you have to account for their sex chromosomes, their, their sex alleles, which is an X and a Y if you're male. Since you only have one X, you will either inherit, if you're male, the trait, or you will not inherit the trait. Females, on the other hand, can be carriers because they have two copies of the X allele. So that means to be, to be, um, to be a female who expresses a sex-linked trait, you would have to inherit not one, but two recessive alleles in order to express that trait, which means that females are less likely to express sex-linked traits. Now, um, let's predict the ratio when you cross a carrier female, and remember carriers are gonna be ones that contain the dominant and the recessive allele. So a carrier female, we'll put her genotype across the top, carrier female, for those of you that don't know what I just did, I put a, a, lower, a, a line underneath my lowercase c just so it made it easier for me to distinguish capitals and lower cases. Um, okay, and now let's do the male's genotype down the side. And he is colorblind, and colorblind is a recessive trait. So he is X little c, Y. And cross it, keeping your dominant alleles first. And when you're doing, when you're looking at the different alleles for a male genotype, you have to make sure that you put your X's first. So predicting the ratio, well, if I look here, I see that I have one box in my opponent square where um, this individual would be female and colorblind. Below it, a male that is colorblind because for the female, they inherited two recessive alleles and the male inherited only the one, so he's colorblind. But then when you look at the other two boxes, you have over here a male that is not colorblind right, CB for colorblind, and the female, um, she is a carrier. Now, phenotypically, a carrier is not going to be colorblind. So we have 50% of their offspring being colorblind, 50% being not colorblind. But you could break that down into sex, and then you'd have, um, you'd have males are 50% likely to be um, colorblind and females have a 50-50 chance of being colorblind as well. Okay, multiple alleles. When you look at blood typing, that's the only example of a multiple allele problem. And the reason that you can have AB blood is because the A antigen and the B antigen are co-dominant to each other, so they are both expressed at the same time, just like in that roan cow example we saw two slides earlier. Now, um, if we have a problem that asks, can a male who is type B have a child who is type AB if the mother is type O? Individuals who are type O are recessive, so that means that they have two recessive alleles. Okay. Now, if you're type B, there are two different genotypes you can be and still get type B blood. You can have um, homozygous dominant or you can be heterozygous. Okay, so let's, let's do a Punnett square for each of these. Now, these boxes would be the exact same. Now, if this was the Punnett square that we we're looking at, then no, it is not possible for their children to be AB because the mother will never pass on to her children an A allele. So, no, not possible. Now, let's look at what happens if instead of being 
homozygous for type B. This person is heterozygous. Okay, so that means that all of these boxes would actually be recessive, and this individual will be these two boxes would represent individuals that are actually O type blood, and the other boxes B type blood. So is it possible that they have a child with type AB blood? No, it is not possible. Some important diseases to know about. You, you've learned about a lot of diseases in this unit. There are seven important ones that you need to know about. And we've gone ahead and we've, we've chunked them into the, the means of inheritance. If you look at cystic fibrosis, sickle cell, or PKU, you will be looking at diseases that are associated with an autosomal recessive trait, which means that all of them, you must have two recessive alleles, like little p, little p, in order to inherit that trait. You should be familiar with, with this type of inheritance so that if you see a problem associated with these types, you would be able to figure out um, the likelihood of inheriting those diseases. Now, Huntington's disease is the only one that is dominant, which means that if you are homozygous or heterozygous, you will inherit Huntington's disease. And then when you have aneuploidy or a chromosomal disease, this is the one where you'll be looking at a karyotype in order to determine if the individual actually has those diseases. So Down syndrome is your 21st, Turner syndrome and Klinefelder's are your sex chromosomes. So that's where you will look to determine whether that individual has Turner's, Klinefelter's, or Down syndrome. So when interpreting a karyotype, you should be able to figure out three different things. You should be able to identify their gender. Their gender or their sex, you will be looking at the very last, the 23rd set of chromosomes. So look at the very bottom corner. You should be able to see if there's any abnormalities, meaning are, are there pairs for every one of the 23 pairs, or is there a... Uh, a monosomy or is there a trisomy and you should be able to based upon where a monosomy or a trisomy occurs whether it's down syndrome Klinefelter's or Turner syndrome so let's look at this first pro this first um, karyotype underneath um, and we see that we're looking at this one over here we see that the sex of the individual okay you can see there's an X and a Y they are missing a second sex chromosome so because there's only an X sex would be female and that disease would be Turner syndrome okay now if you look at over here we see that this individual is XY so they would be male and then when I go ahead and I scan all of the other sets of chromosomes, I see that there is a trisomy for 21, which means that that individual, that male, has Down syndrome. That's how you read a karyotype. Pedigrees. You need to be able to look at a pedigree and identify the phenotypes of the individual and then be able to translate that into the genotypes. You should be able to distinguish between a dominant, a recessive, or a sex-linked karyotype. In this one, we tell you the disease is PKU, and we know from two slides previously that PKU is recessive, which means that every individual in here that has a shaded circle or square is going to be recessive for that trait. And since they are recessive, and the children of their parents above, both of their parents who do not express PKU have to be carriers, right? They have to be heterozygous. And then every other person in this chart, let's see, uh, the children down here, since they are the children of that mother, they have to be carriers, but everybody else is going to be an unknown genotype because we do not know if they inherited a dominant or recessive allele for that second allele in their genotype. And moving on to biotechnology, gel electrophoresis. 
you need to know 